Hello, this is Pastor Troy. It's good to have you with us today. And uh, I uh, was thinking about the four-dimensional reality that we enjoy and how we see life. And I was thinking about that earlier today and uh, viewing all the things around. I'm out here enjoying the cool weather, and the birds, and the green grass. And I can smell the cut grass. and It's just beautiful out here. And uh, I thank God for the ability to enjoy life in such a full way and enjoy the, the beauty of it in such a broad spectrum. And, uh, but at the same time, I want to talk about that four-dimensional reality, not only how we view life around us, how it affects that view, but also how does that affect how we see ourselves. I think this is very important. And perhaps this is where it would be really nice sometimes to actually see things a little more linear and not so four-dimensional um, and not so deep. When we see ourselves, you need to understand, we also see ourselves the same way we see the world around us. We see things very deep. We see things in detail. And we take note of everything. We absorb everything. We see everything. So when we're looking within, when we're looking at ourselves and who and what we are, this can be problematic for us, at least for myself. I'm going to speak for me, okay? And, uh, you know, I, I can't speak for everybody else. I can only speak for me and my reality as an INFJ. Um, I, I look at myself in such a critical light. Um, you know, I, I know my faults. I know my failures. I know my shortcomings. I know everything. I mean, the, the details. I know where I'm not quite perfect. And, you know, we talk about INFJ perfectionism, and I believe this all, minute, much of it hinges on how we see the world in this four-dimensional reality. We see things so much deeper we see ourselves the same way, and we demand perfection because we see every angle of everything. Um, I did the last video. I talked about sexuality. I believe that's one thing that has kept me from being, you know, uh, promiscuous. Is I see every angle of every situation. I could get myself into a lot of trouble if I'm not careful, and so I view the world you know, in that perfectionist mindset and, and from every angle, or, you know, in a four-dimensional way. I see the world that way. It's not just, you know, in a linear fashion of this is good, this is bad, you know, this feels good, this don't. Uh, I'm just going to run after whatever feels good. I'm, I've never been wired that way. I want to I wanna take note of all the consequences to my actions and understand you know, what could happen. So, with that in mind, you know, when I look at myself and I see myself in the same light, in the same manner, uh, you know, how, you know, how this four-dimensional reality has affected me has really been quite profound. It has actually held me back from a lot of my, you know, potential in life. Uh, I, I play I play piano. I play music. I have most of my life since I was six years old. I've been playing the piano. I've had opportunities in the past to play for some very you know very major groups, and I could have I could have been uh, a very uh, popular pianist if I would have chose to go that route. I had opportunity at 12 years old to go to a special school to learn that trade. To con I mean to I mean university i was i was going to be sponsored by a major gospel singing group they saw in me the possibility the talent to really be something uh in the field of mm -hmm. piano so I, I but i turned it down well i was young for one thing and i was terrified but in my mind all i could see was i could never be that because i see all my flaws i see all my faults i see all the imperfections i know where i mess up that has hindered me all my life because you know, I've never felt I would ever be good enough to, to be a professional pianist. 
I would never be good enough to be a really successful pastor. I would never be good enough to be a success at just about anything you can think of, you know. But at the same time, you know, I know God has given me certain gifts and certain talents. And not to say this in a boastful way, but they exceed a lot of the ability that other people have. And people tell me this, you know, you play flawlessly. You play, and I'm thinking, oh, no, 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 no. I know where I mess up. I can hear it. I can see it. I can feel it when I mess up. And I'm not flawless. Um, but in the eyes of 99.9% .9 of the world out there that hear, they say, you play perfect. And I'm thinking, no, no, no. I know I can hear. I can see every imperfection. But, you know, when most of your friends and your relatives and people around you are thinking linearly, they're not seeing the full spectrum of you the way you are. They don't see your talent the way you see your talent. They don't see all the flaws. They don't hear all the imperfections and mistakes. You know, most of them don't even have an ear for music. You know, they wouldn't know uh, something that was in tune was something that was out of tune. They don't know. I can hear it all. I know when, I know when the piano has the least little bit of a flaw in a key. I, it drives me crazy. It's like, oh, that key's off, you know. That string is off. I know. I can tell. I can hear it. And But most of the people cannot hear that. You know, I sit down to a piano that's not tuned, and I play, and even slightly out of tune. I just, ooh, you know. But there's nothing that gives me any greater pleasure than to sit down to, to a keyboard that is completely, totally in tune. Every note just resonates and sings with each other and is in harmony with each other. It's beautiful. But... 99% of the world out there wouldn't know that a piano is out of tune. They have no clue, but I do. I know when I'm out of tune, too. I know when I'm not resonating with everything around me. I know my imperfections in that same deep way. And so that hinders me. It hinders me from putting myself out there, you know, in the limelight you know, in places to be recognized, in places to be used, and even in places where I can benefit, you know, financially. Or, you know, I've, I've often felt like I couldn't pastor a church that's, you know, financially, you know, well off or has a large gathering. I'm not good enough for that. I'm, I'm not qualified for that. Because I, I see me and all my failures, all my faults. I could never be good enough to be a, a real success you know, in ministry. These things really, you know, I got to thinking about it today, and I thought, you know, this has hindered me all my life from really being the potential that I could be. I'm 48 years old, and I don't feel like I've really reached the potential of what God has put in my life to be. And most of the hindrance has not been everything around me. It has been me. I am my worst enemy. And sometimes, this is where, the, this is the detrimental part of our four-dimensional thinking. It's great that we can see the world around us that way. But when we see ourselves that way, it can really pull us back and hinder us. Because we want and demand perfection. And I know I'm not ever going to get it. I'm not ever going to arrive there. I remember years ago, my father, who's an ESFJ, I love him dearly, but he used to say, son, I'm proud of you as long as you do your best. And that's all I ever expect out of you. And you know, that, that sounds simple, but that's really all we can do is do our best. And you'd be surprised at the people around us. When we do our best, they're in awe. They're in, they're in shock. Because they see perfection when we don't see it. So remember that. If you're a painter, they see a beautiful painting, whether you see it or not. If you draw, if you write, if you write literature, whatever. They read your story. They see beauty. They see perfection, whether you see it or not. When you play music, they hear beauty, whether you hear it or not. 
So we need to we need to learn to cut back on some of our four dimensional thinking when it comes to ourselves and try to understand the world doesn't see it the way we see it. Because I've had many people tell me, Brother Troy, that was beautiful, that was flawless. I, I never heard even not even a mistake. I've heard that over and over again. I'm thinking, you just don't hear what I hear. But hey, you know, lighten up on yourself. You know, you, you're not near as rough as you think you are. And I'm preaching to me right now. I need to say these things because I've been my own worst enemy. I love every one of you. I hope you have a blessed day. Take care.